Hello, Drywall Repairman here. We're just doing a small video on spray texture. Tools and supplies I need to do basic spray texture job, a small job like this under one or two sheets. You can use a pancake, five gallon pancake air compressors work great for these small jobs. I always use a hopper. I know a lot of guys out there use these spray cans, stuff like that. I think these spray cans are gimmicky. You need to spray with a hopper and an air compressor. The bigger the air compressor, for the bigger the job, of course. Like I said, I use this five gallon one for smaller jobs. With these hoppers, there's three different tips on these hoppers. You got a very large tip, a medium tip, and a small tip. Depending on your texture types, you're gonna have to adjust the tip size for your project. The big tip is usually used for spray knockdowns, heavy spray knockdowns, popcorns, heavy splatters. The medium tips used for splatters, a heavy orange peel, a medium sized knockdown, and the smallest tips are used for orange peels, light splatters, and a very light knockdown type textures. So you always want to make sure you use the right tip. Material consistency. With this mud I'm using a joint compound. I always use joint compounds. I keep my joint compounds in buckets. I know when you go to the store you might buy it in a box. It's easier to dump it in these buckets and thin it down. I use a hand mixer because I work in the field but if you have an electric mixer, electric mixers work great. For textures, the consistency is like a heavy pancake batter. Nice and creamy. You don't want a bunch of clumps in your mud, so you got to mix it really good. Make sure your hopper is nice and clean. Everything's ready to go. Make sure you're ready to go with your mud. You just basically fill in your hopper. I don't like to go to the top of the hopper. I know a lot of guys like to fill to the top. Just go halfway. If you need more mud, you can always get more mud. I like to work off my tailgate. Sometimes I'm working off a little bench or a two-foot ladder works great. So you can put your mud up high so you don't have to pick up the mud off the ground. Spray texture jobs, you'll need your air compressor. I use a 25-foot hose. It's easier than a 50-foot hose to manage. A nice clean 6-inch knife, straight 6-inch knife, and a sponge. Clean sponge. Once you get your area, you're ready to texture, always plastic off your area, contain your overspray. Go ahead and get your air compressor and everything hooked up. Fill up your air compressor completely. I have this thing full. I don't have the gauge regulated or nothing. It's to spray at full pressure. Your mud work, you want to make sure all your edges are off. Your mud work, all the dust off the walls before you do spray texture, everything ready for spray. The first thing I like to do is just get everything ready, get my hoses ready, get everything hooked up. The air compressor is full to the maximum, so the air compressor should be off now since it's full. Once you hook up your hopper, you want to turn on the, the adjustment to let some air flow. You don't want to start spraying right away. You want to drain some of the air because it's at maximum pressure right now, so it's going to spray more pressure at the beginning than in the middle, if that makes sense. So you just want to adjust the thing, and then you want to just maybe try on your plastic masking, just spray to kind of get the pattern you're looking for, the depth, the texture. You'll know when you're spraying next to original texture how it should look. And just basically your pattern. When we do these spray knockdowns, we're going nice, even strokes. You can go horizontal or vertical, but whatever direction you start with, you want to go nice pattern. Basically nice and slow. This one I'm doing horizontal, so I'm just going left to right, right to left, right to left, so on, so on. Nice, even pattern. I'm not just spraying here and spraying there. Nice, even patterns. Once you get everything all sprayed in one direction, you want to follow through with the opposite direction. Since I went horizontal on this spray pattern, I want to cross it off and go vertical. So now I'm going to go vertical, vertical, vertical. You also want to spray extra, give extra detail around your angles, around your baseboard, around your trim. Those are always light spots in the texture. So you want to spray a little extra around these. And then sometimes a lot of guys like to just turn off the valve on the hopper and let the air compressor build up 
and then they'll follow through on an open valve all the way full pressure and just basically do a diagonal spray or cross it off just to fill in any light spots. It gives it a nice consistent pattern so you don't have a spray spot here, spray spot there. It basically makes everything consistent, a nice spray pattern. This is a spray knockdown. But spray knockdowns is basically a spray splatter. We're just doing a spray splatter, nice even spray splatter. If I left this texture right now, it'd be a perfect spray splatter texture. Oh. Just double check, make, it, make sure everything looks sprayed nice and even. Basically right now, if we let this dry overnight and paint it, it would be a perfect wall splatter. Extra detail around your baseboard, around your angles, like I said. Just double check everything. In this room, I have low lighting, so I do have a light. So if you need some extra lights, always put extra lights in your work area. Spray past your patch. This one, I'm going a, a foot or two above the actual patch, so it fades into the existing. Crossing off all my texture. Once you get it all sprayed, go ahead and disconnect your spray setup. Disconnect, unplug it. Get it out of the way, tight area like this. Get everything out of the way. I just give it a minute. You don't need to let the mud set up a real long time, so I just give it a minute. I like to pull my mask and get everything out of the way so it's not in my way when I go to tech do a knockdown. This is a very light spray knockdown, so I'm just going to follow it through with a 6-inch knife. The six inch knife, a lot of guys like to use bigger knives. I like to use a six inch knife because it's straight, nice straight knife. If you use these bigger knives, they're okay, but you wanna make sure the big knife is straight. No curves in big knives, which are hard to find. So just use a six inch knife. It's your go-to knife in the drywall trade. Once you get every, all your masking peeled off, then go ahead and follow through with a clean six inch knife. I always like to keep a damp, clean sponge with me whenever I do knockdowns. You're just doing a light, light, light knockdown. I'm just letting the knife, the straight edge of the knife glide through. I keep the blade clean with my damp sponge and make sure you use a straight part of your six inch knife to knock down. I'm just gliding over it. I'm not pushing down with no muscle. I'm literally just holding the knife in my hand as loose as possible and just letting the knife glide over the texture. That's why you want to make sure your texture is clean, no goobers in it, because if you get goobers in your mud, then you're going to pull scratches. If you do have goobers in your mud, sometimes you have to strain it before you put it in the hopper. That's a technique using a strainer. But keep your knockdown knife clean. That's the number one thing. Keep it clean, and it'll glide right over this knockdown. You can knock down either direction, diagonal, up and down, left and right, whatever direction. You just want to keep a nice, consistent pressure on all the knockdown areas. You don't want to create flat spots, heavy knockdown areas. So you do a nice, light knockdown. So sometimes it's easier just to do like a two foot by two foot section, move on to the next two foot by two foot section, and so on and so on. I know you'll see videos of guys doing knockdowns on full ceilings using big 20, 40 inch knives. That's fine for bigger projects. For a small patch job like this, just stick to your, ten, your six inch knife. Once you master your six inch knife, then you can move up to eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, 14 inch knife, and so on. But stick to your six inch knives if this is, if you're intermediate beginner in drywall, you're just trying to do patches one or two times just stick to a six inch knife double check all your knockdown areas make sure everything looks good consistent make sure you didn't miss any areas this one i'm doing a horizontal knockdown just double checking i'm pulling from the baseboard up just making sure everything's nice nice knockdown nice light knockdown everything's knocked down nicely Get your work area all cleaned up. Get everything cleaned up. Taken out to the washout area. Wash up all your tools. You can follow through the job and double check. Clean the floors. Get everything cleaned up. 
then you're just going to have to let your texture dry for at least 24 hours. This is a joint compounds that I use for these spray knockdowns. Generally with joint compounds, any type of muds, the rule of thumb is to let them dry 24 hours. After 24 hours with spray knockdowns, I recommend sanding. Sanding with a sanding block, either a fine or medium sanding block. With sandpaper, I always recommend between 150 grit to 220 grit. Sand it, then primer. You always have to sand it.